Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Pixelbus Podcast. Uh, we're actually going to tackle something a little bit serious today, which we don't normally do. So yeah, I hope you'll bear with us, and if not, you can see us find us back to our normal hijinks next week. So uh, lately, uh, video games have been kind of the target of some negative attention. And that negative attention has been born out of um, basically the culture, conversation about gun violence that we've been having. And just to set up some stuff really quick off the top, uh, the science, the psychology, social psychology science and the studies have said that there is a link between playing interactive video games and an increase in aggression. Aggression doesn't necessarily equal violence and the, the real discussion uh, in the medical community over are video games good, are video games bad, really center on everyone's definition of aggression in the lab and how is that then transported out into real life. Uh, but we're not going to focus that much on that today. What we are going to focus on is ways that our industry and our hobby needs to grow up or doesn't need to grow up and how we need to start communicating with people. And the point I would like to start with is uh, there was recently a survey done that said that 75% um, of parents feel that violent video games are a contributing factor to violence. Now, when the science on the other side of that argument says, well, they contribute to momentary acts of aggression, um, but that ne not necessarily violence. You know, other, other things have been found to show aggression in the lab, you know, uh, Pee Wee sports, yeah. um, TV shows, movies. Uh, the interactivity of games kind of does kind of put the aggression mm. a little bit more in the forefront. Um, and with the whole testing of this, it's, it's still in its infancy. But, you know, the number one thing that they've used to show aggression in the lab has been this thing called the weapon effect, where a, a, the presence of a firearm or the picture of a firearm has been shown to increase an aggressive response. But with 75% of parents thinking that violent video games cause violence and no science to support that, uh, clearly there's an image problem that I think our hobby has. Yeah, um, it definitely has a, a lot of image problems. But Yes, so I, I think the, the first thing we need to tackle as a hobby and as an industry is, is how are we talking to people that don't play games? You know, like, we don't. We don't talk to people who don't play no, games. No, not really. I, the, Especially about video games. Like, how do you go up to someone and be like, hey, let me tell you about Halo 4. Or, yeah, XCOM or any of those kinds of games. And, and, and it's, it's actually really difficult to talk to somebody because they don't have a lot of frames of reference. Although yeah. it is kind of hard to find a lot of people in this day and age that don't, have not ever played a game of some Joe sort. Joe Biden. I'm sure <laughs> he's played a Wii Sports or something. Maybe. Yeah, well, you know, Obama has a Wii, so it's, true. So it's possible that he's played Wii Sports. It is possible. Um, you know, team building exercises. Oh, yeah. Corporate team building, except <laughs> this is governmental. <laughs> governmental team building. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know how we would go about talking. I mean, you'd have to then set the premise of, you know, you'd have to set the groundwork for this is a video game. This is, you know, the mm -hmm. kind of stuff that goes on in them. Um, some of them are, you know, goofy and fun like you know Wii Sports or any of those types of games and some of them are really you know super violent or mm -hmm. kind of super violent like Manhunt yeah. or Man Halo Man 4 and my, my good comparison is always that, that Halo 4 and Manhunt are both rated M but, but Manhunt have, have, is way yeah, more super violent have content violent. that I would um, understand people saying well this one's qu like highly objectionable mm -hmm. manhunt and this one's not you're shooting aliens in halo 4 yeah you're shooting aliens and, and driving around space tanks but i think the the problem becomes people just see those as both video games mm -hmm. and they're not like it's not we, well they we are technically yeah. <laughs> but they're not the same video yeah. game and well, we don't have this problem with movies that's that's always been um, my kind of the thing i'm always shocked about is that people can always kind of draw the line between a PG-13 or an R or something that's pornographic mm -hmm. um, and say, well, they're, they're not all the same. But then they look at video games and say, well, they're clearly they're all the same. And, and I've heard that anecdotally. Like, I've heard people say, you know, video games are nothing but violence. Yeah. No, nothing but, and then you, you right. show them, you show them that, yes, there clearly is, you have I mean, there is, there is an inherent <laughs> violence in all kinds of games. You are always trying to beat the other yeah. person by, like, there's a even, competition. Even and, and chess is a yeah. somewhat violent game, and it's, you know, not even a video game. It's pieces on a board, checkers, the same mm -hmm. way. It's a 
somewhat violent video game or game when you think about it because you're Monopoly at my house is very violent but you, I mean that's because my dad is an accountant win, account. win all um, <laughs> but you know once you sit down and you explain stuff to people I mean mm -hmm. you you can find out that they're not just for violence I mean there yeah. are there are edu edutainment games like the old where in the world is Carmen San Diego games taught you geography Come on, Oregon Trail? Oregon Trail this is why taught you. Died this entry. <laughs> yes, this is why I've died this entry. But Oregon Trail taught you, you know, uh, resource management mm -hmm. and, and, you know, well, it I, did I, teach you how to hunt, yeah. sort of, kind I, of. I would say that all games teach you something. I, I would say there's, there's a rare few games that are just for fun, have, have nothing, nothing going on. I don't um, know. That Montezuma Blitz game is. Oh, resource management in Montezuma Blitz. Well, time. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Time and resource management. Well, you got the crystals, you got the yeah, 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 you got to yeah, use. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, I mean, so it's, it's little incidental things. They, like they, they teach you something. And if they don't yeah. teach you anything, then you're, hand, I mean, you're, you're working your hand-eye coordination up and, and you're, um, what is it, not necessarily spatial reasoning, but uh, problem solving and critical mm -hmm. thinking skills kind of go into video games. That's why we make such good programmers and things like that. Um, so, you know, it's not, it's not video games are only for violence and they're only there for our, you know, morbid entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are things that you learn by playing games, whether or not they're... Now, there are know, games that are there for morbid inter entertainment. Bulletstorm. Manhunt. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> things of like that. Well, bullet, yeah, Bulletstorm. I could say Bulletstorm. I mean, and, but to hear the head of the NRA um, come out and say, like, we're a shadow industry that's slowly perverting the youth of the nation... Um, that could be said it's of other ignorant things. and wrong. Yes, like, that's the, normally it's it's hard to just say a, a statement is wrong, but that's not that's not what it is. But everybody's entitled to their opinion, no matter how wrong that opinion is. Yeah, but that's not an opinion. He stated that as that's a, that's his so, his stance and his the NRA's stance. And, stance. His statement. Um, and to say that games like Bulletstorm or Grand Theft Auto are marketed to children is wrong. I mean. They're not marketed towards children, but you yeah. know kids are going to play them yeah. either well, because think, of the another, mommy, mommy, I want this yeah. game effect or, you know, they have an older brother or sister that has that's it. A, that's another thing that I think we need to uh, do a good job. I used to think that this whole people not understanding video games would just go away, and I still think it will Eventually. as people that grew up on, you know, Space Invaders mm -hmm. and Mario and Sonic and Final Fantasy and even into um, things like Grand Theft Auto mm -hmm. and Ratchet and Clank. As those people start growing into positions of power, yeah. I think the, this argument will steadily die out. Um, but I, I think we also can't wait for that to happen anymore. When, yeah, no. when the guy in charge, when the guy whose job it is to make sure every American that wants a gun has a gun, the head of the NRA, mm -hmm. puts video games in the crosshairs and says it's their fault, I think video games need to defend themselves. Well, and, and, you know, we always have this issue whenever something bad, like a school shooting or mm -hmm. a mass shooting, something like that happens, the first name or the first thing that's up on the, the, the it's their fault, it's, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, is, is video games. Because clearly like it could be the ease with which you can buy a firearm. No, it, I mean, <laughs> it's, regardless of that, it's, it's always, it's not the gun's fault or it's not the weapon's fault, it's video games that made the guy do the thing that he did. Yeah. And it's when like there's no science to support that, and there's no no even not, no real science. Even though e there's even no anecdotal evidence. Yeah, like we talk about the uh, the guy who tried to assassinate uh, uh, Ronald Reagan thought that his uh, dog was talking to him, and that J D. Salinger was telling him to do it through Catcher in the Rye. Everyone thinks that's crazy, but when someone yeah. says, "Hey, he played video games for a hundred hours a week," so he's uh, he obviously killer. doesn't know. They don't. There's there's no click there. They're like, oh yeah, clearly, you know, these, the Call of Duty trains you to be a soldier, mm. which I've Not seen people really. play Call of Duty. Um, if the, if Call of Duty trains you to be a soldier, our future military will be woefully understaffed, or overweight. <laughs> well, I mean, there don't don't get me wrong. There are guys that have played in, have been in the military. Your <laughs> brother plays this. the hell out of Call of Duty. Mm. Um, so it's not, you know, that's that's a big generalization to say yes. that that trains you to be a, a soldier. But, you know... But those are the generations people are making. And, and yeah, that is. And someone says that 75% of parents think that violent video games make you violent. Yes. Like, we have an image problem. We do. We, and I, we totally have an image problem. I, yeah, I think we need to start, one, as, as hobbyists and consumers, we need to start talking to people that are not. Yes. And telling them, like, when you say all games are violent which I've heard people say, you're 
clearly woefully uninformed. It is, yes, very much so. Because there ain't nothing violent about Tetris. You're not even playing against another person. No. And they're like, well, that's, I meant violent video games. It's like, okay, well, well, that's a different genre. That's a different thing. (laughs) You know? Like, I think people, we as hobbyists need to do a good job of informing everybody else about the amount of violence in some Mm -hmm. games, whether it be none or through the roof. Yeah. Like, uh, when we were talking about Bulletstorm, I said, like, it's violence done for laughs, but it is very gruesome and very violent. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't let, if I had a son, I wouldn't let my son play it. Mm Mm-mm. Um, and that's that's another thing I think we need to do as hobbyists. We need to we need to start recognizing when parents aren't parenting. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the things. I mean, like I've I've actually stood in a GameStop and watched a mom buy her kid. You know, I, I wasn't Bulletstorm. It was might have been like Call of Duty Three. Yeah, the kid was like five. I'm like, really? You you're I mean, gonna? I think. I mean, I, I, this is this is probably gonna, I'm gonna get a lot of flack in the comments for this. Far if, far be it for me to tell you how to raise your kid because I don't I have would. kids. But <laughs> I you know, would be like, do you know what's in this game? Do, do you know do, like if it's Call of Duty three? That was a couple years ago. I'm trying to think of the one that is that's that's the one that takes place in Europe. Oh yeah, that's the, the Treyarch one. Um, I was like, do you know that like you get rewarded for shooting people in the head in this game? And I see what their response is. I was like, do I mean because you're buying this for a child? You're buying yeah. Like, do you know what's in this in this box? Do you know what this little bo- this little corner little thing in the corner means? It says M. Yeah. You now read read what it says in there. It'll say you know adult language, violence, things like that. And, and, and the I ESRB think, does a really good job, but parents don't read that. Well, uh, and I think the ESRB does a good job of that. I think we need. I think the ESRB needs to take a long hard look at it itself and be like, how we're, we're we're putting all this money into rating these games and making sure that parents are informed, but clearly they're not because seventy five percent of parents think that violent video games. Well, violence. and those are the games that their kids want. That's why a lot of parents think that all games parents. are this way. <laughs> yes. Well, and I think I think as hobbyists we need to start. If we want video games to stop being a scapegoat, mm-hmm. we need to start stepping up. Yeah, we need to and, and we tell need, people. You know, and then you know I always put myself in this in this this thing. Like if I was a GameStop employee or a Best mm-hmm. Buy or Walmart or whatever, and the some four souls. Yeah, yeah. If if I worked at a big box like a retail store, mm-hmm. and there was a lady who's walking around with a six year old. And she's holding Mortal Kombat. I'm like, ask ask her. Like, is it a present? Is maybe it a she's present? Not buying it for and maybe she's not boy. buying it for little Timmy. Maybe she's buying it for you know college like, boy Greg. But if we're, if we're talking about the more, new Mortal Kombat, I was like, I'd be like, do you know that like you get part bonus? of like part of this game is as you beat fe- as you uh, fight female warriors, their clothes get torn off. As little of clothes as they have to begin with. Yeah, I was like, do you know <laughs> like do, like that's in this game. And you know you get like obviously parents bonus points aren't for ripping spines out. Themselves. No, they don't. They don't. You know, people like us when we have kids, yeah, we'll we know how we know what games yeah. are and things like that. But and we've said it before, like we wouldn't let our children play certain games. Yeah, I would. If I had kids, I would not let them play Mortal Kombat or Dark Souls or XCOM or anything yeah. like that. At least until they were old enough to understand. You know, this is and s- and maybe fake. maybe you have a sixteen year old. That can handle Halo Four and shooting mm-hmm. aliens, but that and that's an M-rated game. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you all would sixteen-year-olds, or or that you would even then say, well, you were good with this M-rated game. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to give you Manhunt or Torture Simulator. I feel like we're picking on Manhunt. Well, it, that's the one that I just pulled out of my head. Yeah, but or Torture Simulator X. Yeah, um, they're both rated M, and I think we need to do a better job of clarifying for parents. Mm-hmm what that difference is. Because yeah. I think people know, like, this is an R-rated comedy, this is an R-rated slasher movie, we're probably not going to see someone beheaded in, in the, the comedy. R-rated comedy, but we might in the R-rated slasher yeah. movie, so they, they make that judgment call. Yeah. And that's just born out of people have been watching movies... Forever. Ever. Well, so they since, know. since the early 1900s, they've been watching films in, yeah. you know, theaters with or without sound, and, you know, they've gotten... So they can be more realistic, and the generations have figured out the rating system and what they all mean. Yeah. And I don't think the ESRB can't wait for our generation to for, catch up. They can't wait 190 to 100 years for this stuff to happen. Yeah, because um, like I saw a woman uh, upset that her son had Uncharted 2 because there was so much violence in it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's a lot of violence in Uncharted 2. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I would say there's no more violence in Uncharted 2 than like your average PG-13 movie, which is. Yeah. Teen and PG-13 are supposed to be the same equivalent. Yeah, r- roughly, yeah. Uh, but she was like, this should be rated M because you're shooting people all the time. 
and was but, like, well, you need to then educate yourself. Like, what actually makes it an M rated game? Is there blood? Is yeah, I've not, I've not played like an Uncharted headings. game, so I couldn't tell you if there's like no, there's not. There's no blood spray when you you headshot somebody, right? Like it doesn't just no, paint the wall. There's no, there's no like slow down or anything. Yeah, if there is if there is a blood spray, it doesn't hang around. It's just um, like a, and that's it. Yeah, if it's even there, I don't think it is. Yeah, you'd have to go back and play it again. Yeah, I would have to go back and, and play Uncharted two again. I haven't haven't played done it in a that while. Months, but uh, I think we then need to. I think the ESRB and us as hobbyists need to do a good, do a good job of educating the non-gaming public. Yeah. Because clearly they're all putting us in the crosshair. Yeah. Um, and when someone like the head of the NRA says, well, it's not guns that killed your kids, it's video games, they're going, well, maybe it is. But when video literally games that don't thought shoot is projectiles at high velocity. Well, um, yeah, unless, unless you Unless you've got a but remember, gun, guns disc don't, launcher. Guns don't kill people. People using guns kill people. Something like that, yeah. Um, so, uh, and that's, that's one of the things I, I think uh, in this past week, the, the Biden commission wrapped up and then the president came in and, and uh, started the drafting of a legislation and the executive orders. And one of the executive orders was the CDC gets to research gun violence, contributing factors, and the media. So not, not really calling out video games, mm -hmm. but... The only thing I, I hope comes of that is if the CDC, who was government funded, who is supposed to be um, like the, the impartial. commission, yeah, yeah the, they're supposed to be impartial. They're the guys when it comes um, to when diseases. they come out and say like, we did research and video games are not a contributing factor to violence. Hopefully, that will finally end this conversation. Or, or, or such a minimal or un, uh, not a minimal impact, but like an untraceable impact. Yeah. You can't, Minus. you can't tell. Yeah. whether or not it is or as not. As minute as TV or yeah. as movies or any other media we consume. Yeah. Which are not minute, but... Well, no, I mean, you know, people said the same, same thing about books 200 years ago. Books are going to lead to yes. the end of the world. Comic and then, books. And then TV yeah. was, and then all books, this. movies, this is just comic books, TV, heavy metal, Dungeons and Dragons, Mortal Kombat. Punk rock. Punk rock. I mean, it's <laughs> we're, the video games just happen to be the latest in this kind of ongoing fiasco. They're the new whipping boy. And we've just been the whipping boy for longest. I, w I was talking to someone uh, the other day for an interview, and, and they were like, you have a lot of these facts and figures just in your mind yeah. ready to go. And you, you, it's, it seems like this is all rehearsed. Like, did you do your research, research? And I told him, I was like, I've been doing my research for years because since 1994 when Mortal Kombat came out and Night Trap mm -hmm. came out and we kind of started this conversation, yeah. we've all just kind of been educating ourselves for the past almost 20 years yeah. now on this. And it's always the same argument. It it's is. always the same, oh, well, of course. And no. no. <laughs> <laughs> like you're making that of course, and that of course is, isn't entirely true. Yeah. Not entirely false either, but. No. Well. Meh. So that's, that's one thing that I think we need to do as hobbyists. I think re, uh, there's been a, here in Missouri, and on the national level, Missouri uh, introduced a legislation for a sin tax. 1% of every violent video game sold will go to mental health. Um, okay, I one, can deal with that. One, that's not going to happen. Two, um, the Supreme Court has come down and said, like, it's First Amendment fr free speech, and as part of that, it's mm. protected, which means you can't tax it. Yeah. Um, or, or tax it specifically. I'd be behind if she said 1% of M-rated game sales, 1% of R-rated movie ticket sales, 1% of, you know, album sales that have that parental advisory sticker. If it was a blanket statement, yeah. But when yeah, you're saying about video games. Targeting video games specifically, then it's, it's different. Yeah. Um, and on the national level, there's been legislation introduced, I think from the West Virginia uh, representative, one of them, um, to mandate that all video games have ratings on them, which it's already mandated through the ESRB, but it's not a law. No. That's one. Um, and that the sale of M-rated games to minors um, would be illegal, which it's already mandated through the ESRB, but it's not a law. Don't, they, don't retailers get fines, though? From the ESRB. Yeah. So, I mean, it's already there, sort but of, not but it's not law. a law, and they can't get into some serious legal trouble. So, so I'm actually kind of behind this legislation, just for the fact that it I, gives... That's, that's one of the things that I, that I read this last week that's kind of interesting. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Yes. Um, that's how I feel. It, it just depends on how far they want to take it. Like, are they going to close the store that you yes. bought your game from because little Timmy showed a fake ID and bought an M-rated game? I mean, they would if little Timmy showed a fake ID and bought alcohol. 
Yeah, you would lose your liquor license. You would so lose I guess your liquor you license. Lose, then, then you'd have to have retailers getting gaming licenses, not like gambling, but like <laughs> yes. video game video sales game licenses. licenses. But so, so I'm, I'm against it because I don't like the fact that video games are, are singled out. But I'm for yeah. it because I think we need to. Um, same thing with gun sales. Yeah. There needs to be teeth, yeah. and, and and the SRB isn't doing the greatest job of, of having teeth. No. Um, I also think that mandating the legislation. Uh, that all games be rated would do something very important. Well, and and, and, and there's a reason Apple is not for this. Um, their iTunes library store is huge. Store, yeah, and it's kind of in terms of ratings, pretty lawless. You know, we saw it's the, pretty, yeah, it's, it's like the Wild rating. West. Yeah, <laughs> they don't have to submit to the ESRB, and neither do Android games neither for do the Android most part. Games. And you know, indie, you know, indie developed Steam games or mm -hmm. you know people who just make games put them on the internet. They don't have ratings. Nope. Um, which would then, I think, I think a law like this requiring games to be rated yes. would then cause development costs to go up for everybody. Yep. Even your, your and development time definitely because you then need to send it off to be rated. Yeah, and so I mean, it would be not necessarily super bad for the industry, but it would not be great. No. Um, especially for like big companies like. Santa Monica Studios, you know, all the Sony people, the Xbox people. It's the not guy, affect the, them. They're already it's doing not, yeah, they're already doing this stuff anyway. But, you know, notch. If this had come into effect, you know, to effect three years ago, four years ago, when Minecraft was still in early development, it would, he would have had to, if he wanted to sell the game in the U.S., mm -hmm. he would have had to have sent it to some rating you know, company and have them rate it and then send it back and say, oh, well, you can, you know, hit skeletons with a sword, then this is a T rated This is a T-rated game. game, and he may not have gotten as many sales, but... Because it was an indie developed game, bef you know, and there was no law like this, mm -hmm. he got it out there and he made his own studio. Yep. And he's now working on like three other games. And I, I think legislation like this is a reaction, is, is evidence that the ESRB isn't doing the greatest job that it could. Yeah. Um, the ESRB is, has, it's kind of funny. <laughs> ESRB has the most well educated rating. Mm -hmm. So people know, parents know. If they look at it. Like, like M rated is 17 plus, T is 13 plus, E 10 e, plus, yeah, E for everybody. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, there doesn't seem, the parents seem to have disconnected. Because if, if, if you play any online shooter for any period mm -hmm. of time, you will hear a child's voice. And it's if you play any game online for a while, you'll yeah. you'll hear like a ten or fifteen, you know, between and it's like what, a, what are you nine to fifteen here? year old uh, kid. How did, you, how did you get here? And that's just anecdotal evidence, but it goes to show that parents aren't. They're not watching. They they, they say okay, it is well, okay for you to play this listening. game. They're not listening to yes. the rating. They yeah. know what it means. They're just not listening. Yeah, and then they're surprised, you know, that little Timmy knows what a headshot is yeah. at six years old. And it's like, well, my kid wanted this game, and all games are for kids. No. no. Not all games are for I think we need little to do a, kids. Hobbyists, we need to do a good job of that and say, like, there are games out there that are not for kids. No. Um, Bulletstorm, not for kids. Manhunt, not for kids. Grand Theft Auto, not for kids. No. Especially um, not GTA V. <laughs> like, Everything um, that looks like that game just looks awesome. But I mean, when, the, when, when GT4 came out, people interviewed mm. me, and I was like, there's nothing in this game that wouldn't be in a De Palma movie and wouldn't be in a Scorsese movie, yeah. and you need to know that. Yeah, all this stuff that's in... Like, it, like that's, parents need to know that, like, there's nothing in here that is totally depra depraved mm. and horrible, but there's strip clubs, and you can do drive-bys. And there are assassination missions. Do, and can you do drugs? No, that was narc. That you can um, do drugs. I think you. Yeah, you can. You can definitely drink. You can drink totally for sure. Drunk. Yeah. You can. You can. De you can drink while drive while intoxicated in this game. Yeah. Um, that's in here. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't. That would also be in a Scorsese movie, in a De Palma mm -hmm. movie, in a. You know. Yeah. In the Godfather be in trilogy. all these movies. And you need to know that these are similar to that. Yeah. Like, there's nothing in Bulletstorm that's not in a Quentin Tarantino movie. There's nothing in Bulletstorm that's not in Kill Bill. Yeah. No. Um, and you just need, a parent needs yeah. to know that. If and you're okay with your kid watching Kill Bill, yes. then you might be okay with them playing Bulletstorm, Bulletstorm, but don't complain when your kid starts, you know, saying random taglines yeah, from the, the, the game. There's nothing in Heavy Rain that's not in... Uh, Lost Highway. Yeah. By David Fincher. Like, if you would let your child watch Lost Highway, not David Fincher, <laughs> stupid me. Yeah, no. If you would let your kid watch Lost Highway or you would let your kid play Seven, I mean, watch Seven, then yeah, you would probably also let your kid do Heavy Rain. Yeah. I think a lot of parents wouldn't. 
No. I mean, that's just me. I don't know. There's a lot of weird stuff in Heavy Rain, though. Or not weird, but questionable. Well, but st stuff that would be in... Yeah, it would be in a... Seven. In, a, in a would R be movie. in Lost Highway. Um, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I think parents need to understand that. Yeah. And we're not doing a good job. And, and parents I think, are... Uh, uh, by and large, parents, I feel, aren't doing a great job of, of buying games that are for their kids. And for their yeah. kids' age range. Um, now, granted, this is just my opinion. There's no evidence to back this up. This is just me saying I've seen parents buy their six-year-old, you know, Call of Duty and Black Ops. I mean, let's be honest. We all have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you've been to a big box that, that's, store, that's especially at Christmas time. Yeah, that's the problem that we're facing. Is that uh, I buy a lot of booze. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not an inordinate amount of booze for the type of person I am, but I buy a lot of booze. But I've never seen someone walk into a, a liquor store and plop down fifty bucks and buy a bottle of Johnny Walker. Um, and then hand for it their, their six-year-old, six no. <laughs> and I think we need to start talking to people, and we need, and the ESRB needs to start talking to people. I think mm -hmm. if they did a PSA or commercial mm -hmm. push, so I think we need to start having this conversation with people. We need to start sitting down and saying, "Hey, games are art, and we'll we'll, we'll show you Journey, we'll show you you know beautiful things, show mm -hmm. you Braid, show you Fez, and games as art." But because of that. Games are also violent, and games are also sexualized, and yes. games are also, you know, fun and stupid, and they make dirty jokes, and they make funny slapstick jokes, and there are all these things like TV is, like movies are. Yes. And we need to start having that conversation. This is the only the primary difference between TVs, movies, and books, and video games is you control the character, mm -hmm. but a lot of the times you don't control, uh, like, story beats yep. that are funny or over-sexualized or super violent. Um, you know, that's, those are done what we call machinima style, and they just take the in-game characters and do whatever with them. But, you know, for the most part, you know, and the argument that a lot of people make, and that's why it makes people violent, is you're in control. So, yes. what, you know. And, and, and there, is, there is something to be said to that, that yeah. the, the interactive aspect of it does ingrain an, an aggressive response. Yes, it does. Um, as much as, you know, things like competitive sports yeah. and stuff, things that are interactive. So it is a media that's slightly different than everyone's yeah. used to, but not that different that we should let people get by with being uninformed. No, no that's, we should that's not my do value. that. And I think if we want to avoid these conversations in the future of video games cause school shootings, or, or get laughable. past these conversations and, yes. and talk about the deeper meanings of video games, as far as you know, can you quote love a video game? Yes. As far you know, will you cry when you get will you to cry level with seven? you? Yeah, the, the last in. The Steven Spielberg. Yes. Games will be art when you cry getting to level seven. Guess what, Steven? Or Aerith dies. And, and <laughs> Journey's good. And <sighs> poor Clementine. Poor Clementine. <laughs> um, so uh, we need to start, if we, if we want to get past this conversation, we need to start having other conversations. Yeah. And those conversations need to be with parents yeah. and the people that don't play games. And when they buy their child Bulletstorm or Manhunt, you... Mm -hmm. It's going to be horrible, it's going to be awkward, it's going to be super annoying, but I have a feeling, um, as a hobbyist and as consumers, we should talk to parents yeah. and say, are you sure you want to buy your kid this? Because if someone was buying booze for their child, are you sure you want to buy booze for your child? Yeah. And, yeah. and it's, people will be against this and everything, and, oh, yeah. and that's your right. And if you want to have a discussion in the comments, Dave and I will more like, more than, be more than thrilled to have discussions with you in the comments about where games fit in the broader scope of our yeah. culture and our society. But if we want to get past games cause, 75% of parents think violent video games cause violent behavior, mm -hmm. we need to start talking to them. Well, and, and I don't want to sound like, you know, that the violence of video games is good. It is entertaining well, it's, it's, for some things, but it also... It's been shown that it can be a, a release. Yeah, a and... and People will, rather than going and decking their boss after work, after a really crappy day, they'll go home and play three hours of Call of Duty and yeah. blow off a bunch of steam and feel better. So it's not like, you know, video game violence doesn't have a purpose or doesn't have a, you know, beneficial yes. effect on people. And studies know? have been sh shown the, the valve, the, the steam valve effect. Mm -hmm. Releasing pressure. Yeah, and and or you know you it, if you don't play games very much or if you would rather develop games, people will take that anger and focus it into a developmental state where they sit there and they write out code yeah. and and come up with level designs and things like that. Now their level designs may look a lot like the building they work in, but <laughs> you know whatever I mean, inspiration think, comes from everywhere. I think a lot of things come come down to especially now in this video game violence. It, yeah. it, it's a reflection of our culture and how we're more. 
condoning a violent mm -hmm. act than sexual act. Yeah. Um, so like you said, kids want to play Call of Duty and everything, and parents would buy their kids Call of mm -hmm. Duty. I don't think parents would buy them their kids DOA Extreme Beach Volleyball. No. Because no. it's very clear on the cover of that the, box the, the what that is, game is about. Yeah, yeah. Girls playing volleyball and damn near nothing. So and I, uh, we need to have conversations yes. with parents, and it's going to, like I said, be awkward. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's like and, talking to your and kids maybe about they, sex. May, maybe they want their child to play a bullet storm, and that is 100% their right as a parent, and more power to them. That's the great thing about this country. But if their kid's lying to them about what's in bullet storm, yeah. it's only going to come... That single act will probably not blow back on us, but clearly decades of children lying to their parents, because you and I both did it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I got Mortal Kombat 3 when I was 12. <laughs> yeah, something like so, that. Yeah, that sounds about right. 12 or 13. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we've all done it, and as adults... Well, I didn't lie to my parents, so my dad knew it was in the games, because my dad was informed. He, you know, yeah. kind of knew what was going on, because he was into games, too, to my a degree. My mom had better so. things to do. <laughs> Well, it wasn't until my, my dad um, showed up that yeah. I had someone that was really informed about what was in video games. Yeah. And I think gaming websites need to do a better job of writing reviews for parents. I think, yeah. I think the ESRB I think there are would, websites for that. Yeah. Well, but they're not the kind of websites that would fairly review video games. Um, okay. I think parents, I think the ESRB could do one thing today for mm -hmm. parents. And I think that is the ESRB could ch set up a YouTube channel. And all that YouTube channel does is a 20-second video of the worst parts of every game. Because the ESRB has to get videotape from the developers of the worst parts of every game. And then, and then they just splice it in? Splice it down to a 20 seconds and just say, parents, this if you want to buy your kid Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4, These, are the, these here, are the four worst things you're going to see in this, this game. This is what's in that game. And I, I think that would do a, a long way to encourage parents to get active. Our... One main thing, if you're a parent out there right now and you're watching this video thinking, what do I do? Be informed of what your children play. Be informed of what your children are doing, period. What your children watch on TV, what your children watch yep. at the movies. What? Be informed about what your children play in video games. That's your job as a parent. Please do it. Do because it. we're really tired of handling it for you. Um, and uh, the same percent of parents who think that violent video games mean violent behavior show us that we do have to do your job for you. Sadly. And we're not parents. No, so we're, we're not parents. We're under-equipped to deal with this stuff, guys. Come on. But for the, for the gamer out there that doesn't have kids, that's really fed up about all this discussion about violent video games and violent media and all this stuff, um, we're going to grow up. Time, time will see uh, this argument be nullified. Hopefully. Because people like us will be in the positions of power, and they'll know not all video games are the same. I think they, they probably are going to create like a department of... Well, uh, of electronic entertainment or something. I doubt that. A DEE. It takes a lot to create a governmental department. Hey, um, you know, why not? Although if Bush can do it, anyone can do it. Uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, but once we, won, in, in a couple of years, once it gets, I mean, it's kind of things like gay marriage is going to happen whether people want it or not. The restriction on gun sales is going to happen whether you want it or not. Just because of the, the slow progress of time and how the younger generation thinks versus how the old conservative generation thinks. But that's literally been the story of our nation from its inception. Yeah. So please get involved. We know it's uncomfortable, but if you see something going on that shouldn't be going on, this goes for everything in your mm -hmm. life, bullying, anything. If you see something that you want to speak out about, I encourage you to speak out about it. Once again, Dave and I will field any questions in the comments if any show up, and we might be wrong, we might be right, let us know. Uh, we'll see you next week. We'll be back on our normal uh, chutzpah. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll give you a preview of next week. I played Nino Cooney. I am, I am eagerly waiting that thing's release. <laughs> when did Sa you play it? Salivating. Was it like a beta a de demo or something? Well, it comes out Tuesday. And I plan on uh, spending every free moment oh, of the okay. next week. You, you will play Nino Cooney. Play Nino Got Cooney. You. Okay. Because Nino I thought Cooney you meant you is, had is, is, not M rated, is not rated M for mature. Um, but it will probably probably touch me in my heartstrings. And Studio Ghibli stuff has a way of doing that. Yeah. Well, okay. Later. <laughs>